of the Lord, the Feast of Trumpets is called Yom Teruah, the day of shouting, crying loud, and or blasting. I want to give you one scripture from last week. Let's catch up to James 1.18. Last week was the festival of Shavuot, which was ultimately the Feast of Weeks where we brought the first fruits to the Lord and the twin loaves, where we learned about the birth of the Lord and the betrothal of the Holy Spirit. James 1.18, and remember on Pentecost, Shavuot, the Holy Spirit came upon the believers, the apostles, and the other disciples, the 120, for the first time corporately ever, fulfilling the promise of the Lord and of the Father. In James 1.18, and it reads, of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Now again, when we learn what the feasts of the Lord mean, we can comprehend a, a massive percentage more of the language in the New Testament. Would you agree with me? See, without the festival of first fruits, we're a first fruits of creation. Okay, that's great. What's that mean? We came forth first. First of what? We are the first of the crops. In other words, first the disciples, the apostles and the disciples and the believers, and then what? Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be sanctified through faith in Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord, our Redeemer, our Messiah. We are the first fruits of the Lord that fulfills the promise of God, which fulfills the spring feasts or the Moedim. Remember that feasts in Hebrew is Mohadim. Now the Moed, the holy days, the Moedim, actually means appointment, a divine appointment. You know what you do with appointments? You put them on your calendar, and then you fulfill them. I want you to think about that. The Lord puts appointments on his calendar, and then he fulfills them. What do you fulfill an appointment? A meeting. You meet with someone for the reason of something, right? Look at your own calendar. Some of you, you have phones, you look at your calendar. Whatever you put in, you intend on doing something that day, right? Whether it's meeting someone, going somewhere. Well, remember now, people always say, these aren't Jewish feasts or the feasts of the Lord. Those are kind of inseparable. You don't have, you can't have you know, the nation of Israel without the Lord because the Lord is the origin of the nation of Israel, okay? And it doesn't matter. Yes, they're Jewish feasts. They're Bible feasts. They're Yahweh feasts. They're Jesus feasts. They're, they're, what, they're Old Testament feasts. They're New Testament feasts. You could say whatever you want. They are the feasts of God. He is the author. He's the one who set the appointment, the divine appointment. And that appointment was to meet with us. Now, let me tell you, Jews comes from Judah, people of praise. And from Judea, we are the inhabitants now of, Je of Jerusalem, of the holy city of God. And you know what Hebrew is? Hebrew comes from the word hapiru, which is they that crossed over. Understand, well, crossed over what? The Red Sea. That was famous because that was the true start of the corporate people of God. And you know what God called that corporate people? His firstborn. The very first of the children of God corporately are the Hapiru. That's what neighboring tribes called them, the Hapiru. They were these, uh, they were these traveling, sojourning, uh, warring people who believed in the Yahweh God. And again, that name Hapiru means to cross over. So these people, God set us free from slavery and into sonship. And as we're born again, we're born for the first time as a nation. And we're born, we have a what? Birthday. Okay. The true birthday of the church, people say, well, it's Pentecost. Other people say, actually, it's John 20, 20, when Jesus appeared and breathed on the church. Beloved, you know when the church started? Passover, 1500 B.C.? When the people of God began, God breathed on them and delivered them out of the water. What happened in Exodus? The water broke. The water of the womb? Yeah, the plans of God. And out of that water came the infant child, the nation of Israel. Hallelujah in which you and I are grafted in. We are all part of the nation of Israel through the Red Sea crossing. Okay. The Feast of the Lord, Yom Teruah, the Feast of Trumpets, is also can be called Rosh Hashanah. It's the head of the year. 
On Yom Teruah, you get the long blast. Teruah also means a long blaster shout. This long blaster shout commemorates the years end. Now, when you look at these horns, I want you to know, some people say, well, this was before they had trumpets. Eh. What do you mean before they had trumpets? They had silver trumpets. Okay? The difference is that the ram's horn shofar is made out of organic material. Okay? And the kudu Yemenite shofar is made out of organic material. It's actually grown from a biomechanical vehicle, a ram or a, or a you know, a sheep, a ram, a lamb, a, a, a male antelope, some type of gazelle or a goat. They all grow horns. And the Bible says the horn is the strength or power of the creature. So when we blow these horns, that is a, it's a symbol of power. It's loud. Imagine if you were in the Beth HaMikdash, the holy temple, and it's Passover. Well, when does it start? When are we supposed to come? When you hear the siren, when you hear the horn. What if we're supposed to go to war? How do we know when to attack? Remember, even in the Civil War, they had it. They had trumpets as well. What is that for? Different and distinct sounds either gather the people or disperse them to go into battle or a time to celebrate. Ten days before Yom Kippur is called the Days of Awe is Rosh Hashanah. The Feast of Trumpets is before Yom Kippur by ten days. Blow the trumpet. Declare a fast. Consecrate the people. Sound the alarm. It's, it's, it's time to approach God. During these times and appointments, remember the scheduler meets with the schedule E. On Passover, the appointment, Jesus died. He became our Passover lamb. On the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the appointment, Jesus entered into the tomb. On the Feast of First Fruits, Yom Bikarim, the appointment, Jesus raises from the dead. On the Festival of Shavuot, the appointment, Jesus is born. The word became flesh. On the festival of Shavuot, the promise of God, the appointment. Stay there until the promise of my Father meets you. Until you have a cloven tongue of fire and you're speaking in a new language. They met the Holy Spirit corporately. When you meet someone, that's an appointment. And it's a divine appointment, meaning that it was appointed by God. Yom Teruah is the day of blasting, the day of shouting. Now again, that sound, the, that teruah, is a very specific. That is a teruah blast. Like your phone, it has different and distinct sounds. That's my text message. There's my email. That's my alarm. I put it on silent because I'm trying to sleep in tomorrow. Here we go. Right? I mean, they all have different. Bink, what's that mean? Battery's low. How do you know all this stuff? Well, I, I guess I just learned it. It's okay to learn this. Some of you go, man, I never knew all this. Beloved, this is, this is old technology, and it's cutting edge. They don't have more. They, they don't use this is, it. this is as modern as the shofar is, okay? Again, it's made out of grown organic material made by God. It doesn't need to be improved upon because it's perfect. The silver trumpets, the Yemenite kudu shofar, and the ram's horn shofar, okay? This is what was caught in the thicket for the sacrifice. When you sacrifice a sheep, guess what you get a pair of? Ram's horns. Let's recycle and use those as a trumpet to bless and praise the Lord. Let's go to Numbers 10. Let's go to Numbers 10, 1 through 10. Numbers 10, 1 through 10. Bradley, that's you. Numbers 10, 1 through 10. Now, they were used specifically and succinctly for different things, okay? The silver trumpet and the shofar... They had different purposes. Also, let me tell you one thing about this shofar. This also could be used to pour oil on a king or a prophet. Okay? Say that this part is blocked up. I fill this with oil. See, it's hollow. I fill that with oil, and I have some type of cap and a little string. 
And next thing you know, I see the next prophet, David, come over here. And it gets poured all up on his face. The oil comes all down and anoints him up. And it also is carried about in the power in a horn, symbolizing power and authority. These are very strong, mind you now. Very powerful objects. Remember, a bull without horns is not scary. A bull with horns, you better get out of the way. Let's go to Numbers 10, 1 through 10. Thank you, Lord. Every month, the new moon. When's the new moon? Time to blow the silver trumpets. We're going to go to war. Send the people. Time to blow the trumpets. Hey, call the soldiers back home. What are we going to do? Blow the trumpets. We have a divine appointment. We're supposed to meet with God. Blow the trumpets. This is before cell phones. There's no Amber Alert. There's no FaceTime. It's all, and there are no Facebook. It's all face to face. How do I tell an entire city group you're supposed to report to base right now? I'll tell you how you do it. You get the silver trumpet and you stand at the place on the temple that is right about there and you get the horn and you begin to blast now you're at your house winnowing some grain burning your little Gideon's lamp, reading the Torah, combing your sheep, you know, whatever. And you hear the sound from afar. Hey, hey, they're blowing the shofars. Get ready, we got to go. Of course, you got to blow it enough time for the furthest inhabitants to come in. But this is the way. Now, it's interesting that this is still the way that heaven operates. Again, you know what's so beautiful about the menorah? The menorah is still the most advanced technology. This shofar is the most advanced technology. Again, it's out of nothing, and it grows. The Lord grows it all by itself, and then it's ready for you. And growing your own instruments, thats they're still trying to do that with science, grow weird stuff. God's just so advanced, okay? I need a trumpet, God, and he grows it by itself. Whoa. Amazing, right? It really is amazing. Okay, let's do this. Let's, I want to show you some of the words here. By the way, let's go to Leviticus 23. I want to show you where Yom Teruah is in the scriptures. There is, there's not a lot of literature about this collectively in the word. It is there, and we're going to find it. The, the, the literature is where the trumpets are used, not so much on the Day of Trumpets. The Day of Trumpets is a commemorating, a reminding, a bringing into remembrance again. And I told you what it's used for. You can use it as a siren, uh, to cheer, to warn, to summon, to disperse, to change. It's a voice of authority. Leviticus 23, 23 to 27. Uh, Colette, can you read that to us?
Okay, Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Teruah, they're all within 10 days of each other. Now remember the spring feast. There's th four spring feasts and three fall feasts. Appointments, Moed, Moedim, divine appointments from the scheduler to the schedulee. In the springtime, all of a sudden you have Passover, Yom Ebikarim, Shavuot, right? And unleavened bread, all like this, bam, 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 bam. All within 50, 60 days, you have all four spring feasts. Then you have the harvest. The entire summer is harvest. And then at the end of the summer, what do you have? The three fall feasts. And they, they also happen, they all happen in order. Bam, bam, bam. In Leviticus, that was the day you sound the alarm. Everyone sounded the alarm. They, they did no normal work. It was, it was a different day, if you will. Do you remember when you were a kid and you had to do fire drills at school? And you'd be doing whatever, and they'd do the drill, and you had to stop what you're doing, and you have to leave, no matter what it is. Now, that's just a test so that when the fire comes, well, how am I going to know if the building is burning and I will be burned alive? If I, how do I know? You hear the siren. The fire alarm. It's a sound. This is an audio sound. And sometimes there's flashings of light. They did use signal fires. I want you to know that, especially during first fruits. They would blast the trumpets, and they would light a signal fire. Now, some of you have seen movies where they have a tower. It doesn't have to be super tall. Say it's twilight and it's dark out. You know how far you can see a light away like a lighthouse? Same idea, except for it's not a xenon or halogen bulb. It's a literal fire. They would build a tower, sometimes 20 foot, 30 foot tall. They would have a stairway in there. You could go climb to the top. And there's a kindle in a wood, and they would light the fire. And you could see that from far. And if it was so far away that you couldn't see it, then in between you and it, there would be another tower with another signal fire. So I would light my fire. He would see it. He would light his fire. They would see it. They would light their fire. And all of a sudden, like phone lines that communicate, the signal fires that tell people, hey, it's time to harvest now. The high priest has declared that the crop is holy. In the same way, when there's trumpet blasts, know that there also is signal fires. There's also things going on in the heaven and the earth. Let's read about this. Let's go to Hebrews 12, 19. Now, this is probably the most significant revelation concerning the trumpet is how it started is how it's going to stop. Okay? How it started. What do I mean by it? The story of God, how it started is how it's going to stop. I didn't say end, I said stop, okay? The word for end or last is eska in the Greek. That's where we get the word eschatology, the study of last things, the study of the end. But for us, that's really our beginning. The only thing that's ending is the temporal transition of struggling with a fallen world. After that, we get a new body, the millennial kingdom. Jesus rules for a thousand years and there's just grace. Now there's grace, grace, grace because we need it because there's sin, sin, sin. In the millennial kingdom, there is not such a thing. Let's go to Hebrews 12, 19. Uh, uh, let's go, Amber, if you read that to us. And then Brent, why don't you go to Exodus 19, 10 to 12. And Jeremiah, you'll do Exodus 19, same chapter as Brent, verses 16 to 19. Okay. Sure. Okay. When they came to Mount Horeb, the holy mountain of God, okay, in Saudi Arabia, what happens is the holy mountain of God where Moshe, Moses, got the Ten Commandments. And what's happening is the Lord spoke and thundered with such authority, with such power. Listen to what they said. The sound of the trumpet 
and a voice whose words made the hearers beg, no more, no more. What do you mean no more? That you wanted God to speak. Beloved, when God speaks, it's not just a shaking. And it's not just volume. They see fire on top of the mountain shaking in volume that is so terrifying that they request, actually, from now on, Moses, you talk to God and then you just tell, you just, okay? I mean, can you imagine that? God. Praise God, we have a gentle whisper. That's how the Holy Spirit communicates with us or else you would be, you would be terrified. We are no different than them. Let's look at this. Now, this account, Hebrews, is reading. I bless God for the book of Hebrews. Hebrews refers to the temple, the furniture. Hebrews is such a mature book. Hebrews was written to the Jews dispersed to the four corners of the earth. In other words, hey, I know you're going to be away from home, away from your traditions and your literature. What can I write to encourage you to finish, cross the finish line? It has to be some deep stuff, right? I got to give you the real juice. Hallelujah. And he's reminding them of the very first sound of a trumpet blast. When was it? When the Lord spoke. Let's go to Exodus 19, 10 through 12. Exodus 19, 10 through 12. Okay, that mountain is the holy mountain of God, okay? It is so holy, right? You don't, this is, you remember, holy things you don't treat with contempt, okay? Holy things are like electrical things. You must have respect for them, right? Or you simply will not. <laughs> right? Blessed is the he who understands. Let's look at Exodus 19. 16 through 19. Jeremiah, that's you. The sound of a trumpet, okay? Shaking. Remember when we started studying the Ark of the Covenant and we see the temple in heaven on there's lightnings and thunderings. And have you ever, about, the, about this time of year, maybe about a couple weeks ago, have you ever seen a lightning storm? And it's like zap, 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 zap across the sky. It's amazing. To be in one is very different. But to see one, amazing. You see the flash and you count. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, bam, it's three miles away, right? So they, at least they teach you when you're, you're young. So it's, it's true, but it's different to see it. It's amazing. It's another thing to be in it when lightning hits the ground and you, I actually, I actually one time was up uh, interceding. I was praying deeply way in the springs in Seven Falls. And I was crying out to God, answer me by fire and the lightning hit so powerful it it took me off of my feet up into the air backwards and landed on my back about a six foot i mean it was amazing when the lord that beloved god is power he's not just powerful he is power he is the author of light of electricity of power of powerful he is every, he is full power he's everything and when he speaks, beloved, it's terrible. They also say about God, he's terrible. It doesn't mean like, you're terrible, I can't stand you. It's more like, 
You're terrible. I can't stand to be for you. You're so powerful, so mighty. It's terrible. It's terrifying. But God's not scary. He's holy, and he should be feared. Let's go to Numbers 29, 1 through 6. Alec, that's you. Numbers 29, 1 through 6. Try this one. Time to go to war. All the people charge. The voice of God. The mountain shaking. Now the trumpet of God, let me tell you, the, the, the volume is like exponentially more, unbelievably more. It, it's the type that will vibrate your eardrums. Okay? I am, I am a man with a shofar. God is God in the sound of a trumpet. Who do you think blows the trumpet, by the way? The angels. Yeah. On earth, the Kohanim blow the trumpet, the priests. In heaven, the angels blow it. We're going to get into that next week, about angels blowing the trumpets. I want to show you real quick. Let's go. Before we read numbers, let me show you this real quick here, okay? Because they found this. By the way, here's a coin from the Bar Choba revolt or revolution. It's about 135 A.D., common era, Okay. And, and Bar Choba had a revolt against the Romans. And it's interesting, they made this coin, and they used this coin during the times. Here is a harp, like David played his song, and it pleased the Lord, right? He played a harp, and it pleased God. That's what a harp looked like, or it's called a lyre, L-Y-R-E. What do you think that is? What does that look like? Two silver trumpets, okay? This is over 2,000 years old. Silver trumpets, okay? Let's look at another image. Does anyone want to take a guess at what this says? That's right. The trumpeters stand here, the place of trumpeting. Now, remember when I showed you on the Beth HaMikdash, the temple, where would the trumpeters stand? In other words, where is the fire alarm? Right there. Little red box, and it says fire. That is holy to warn us for a fire, right? And you have code. You have building codes. This, it has to go there. It has to be so many feet from the wall, the ceiling, and the electrical outlet. And there's sprinklers in case of a fire. Now there's some, some practical needs. But the place of trumpeting is the place in the temple where the trumpeters stand, and they take their position, and they're ready. That's a full-time job, by the way. If you are a trumpeter, and I'm a Kohenim, I'm a priest, and today's the day of trumpeting, I stand here until you tell me when. You tell me when. The priest tells me, and the high priest, you tell me when to blow the trumpet, I'll blow it. Other than that, I stand at attention. Okay? Let's look at the next one. Now this is, uh, if you can see that, that's a picture of the corner of the temple and the trumpeter standing. Now they found this on the temple mount. On the temple mount, they found that piece of rock out of limestone I just told you, from the Beth uh, Mikdash. Now that was probably from 560 BC when the temple was rebuilt under Zerubbabel, the governor of Persia. He was a Jew. He came back with Nehemiah and Ezra, very famous scribe and uh, builder of God. Uh, this is when Dar after Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Azariah, Hananiah, and Mishael. During that story, Jeremiah, right, then comes the prophet Ezekiel. I'm trying to show you where we are chronologically. Then comes Ezekiel. Then comes Nehemiah and Ezra and Zerubbabel, and they go back and rebuild the temple, in which case this rock is from. Let's look at another picture here. And this is a, just an illustration of the trumpeters inside of the temple courts on the steps where they praise God. Now, you know, we have every once in a while, we have a church choir, and everyone puts on a little silk robe that they get. It looks like a graduation gown, right? Yes, Lord, for the rest of our days, yes, Yes. 
that they all have, you know, they all have a song and they praise. Guess where that idea comes from? The Beth HaMikdash. The first praises of God came when the Kohanim would praise God and what instruments do they have? Actually, you're looking at it. They would have the silver trumpets and they would stand and, and this also was an instrument of praise. Not just warning. It's amazing because it can do all the fire alarms just for fire. It's not like, all right, start the warship. I mean, when that happens, everyone's like, do we leave? Do we stay? Because you know the sound. Okay? You know the sound. Let me show you the scripture, and then we're going to read Numbers uh, 29 real quick. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Carol, that's you. 1 Corinthians 14.8. Then we'll finish with Numbers 29 for this week. Let's look at one more picture here. There is modern day. Modern day Kohanim from the Temple Institute, and guess what they're holding? Silver trumpets, okay? Two silver trumpets, about the same, okay? Made out, of, and theirs are specifically for signaling time for the sacrifice, time for the festival, time for the appointment, and they're blowing the trumpets, okay? One more slide. These two goats, one of those is going to get the ax. That's right. Azazel. The scapegoat is during the festival of what? Day of Atonement. All right. We're going to learn about that the week after next. We're going to go on. But look at you have the, These are all Kohanim. By the way, these are real Kohanim. These are real descendants of Aaron. One of Aaron's children was the Kohath. The Kohathites are descendants of Aaron. And the Kohanim are, that's what it means to be a priest. Now, by the way, we are all priests and kings. That was the promise made to Abraham. And by you, through faith, you enter into that because of Jesus Christ. But this is real. They are really training for the Beth HaMikdash, the third temple. Two silver trumpets blowing them, saying what? We have a sacrifice. Okay, next slide. There's the real sacrificial lamb. Okay. I want you to know that trumpets were being blown when the lamb was identified. Wow. The voice of an angel. Okay. And here, with the voice of an angel, with the trumpet blast, the last trumpet. Remember, what was the first trumpet? Mount Sinai. Exodus 19. The beginning. An angel blew the trumpet as the voice of God spoke. And in the last days, the last trumpet blows. And guess what he does? Same thing he did in, in, in the beginning. They gather the people. Why did you make these silver trumpets? To gather the people. Why is the angel going to blow the trumpet in the last days? To gather the people. That's right. That is right. Okay, let's go back here. Now let's read Numbers 29, 1 through 6. Numbers 29, 1 through 6, and then Carol, why don't you read that first, actually. Let's go ahead and we'll finish with Numbers. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 8. 1 Corinthians 14, 8. Okay. If the trumpet makes an incorrect sound, who's going to... In other words, if your phone makes the alarm sound when you're getting a text or the text sound you're getting the alarm or it vibrates when you want it to be loud you're going to miss it how many times has it happened to you i missed the call oh my phone was on silent what is silent it's an it's it's physical vibration that produces a low low audio frequency especially when it's on something whereas i hear i need to set my alarm does anyone have an alarm that goes you know no, usually it's like repulsive and loud. Dee, dee, dee. Right? Even to the point where someone else is like, dude, turn your alarm off because you're supposed to be up and I'm not. In other words, you know what the sound means, right? How about when you're playing an instrument and it's out of tune? Yeah. Even if you're not a musician, you know when something is out of tune because it just rings your, it doesn't sound right. With the trumpet, okay? Remember that there were different trumpet blasts. The teruah was a long ba 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 And there was a tekeah, which was 
before and after the straight sound. The decay are short blasts. Ba 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 the terua. Ba and those are used interchangeably again. Let me just give you one more example. The tekea is this. That's the tekea and the turua. Okay, now let me just give you an example. Okay, gather the people. Time to go to war. You understand the difference, right? Hey, we've got a sacrifice. And while that's happening, Kohanim are marching through. Dun, 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 dun. Awesome, right? It just started. Give me, give me a little while to perfect this thing here. <laughs> they have different now. Say you give the war cry. Get my spear. Get my plow here. My plowshare and sharpen it. Get the, get the weapons. Get ready. What are you doing? It's time to go to war. Oh, dude, sorry. That's a new priest. We're actually supposed to have a sandwich right now. Oh man. Right. Come on. You ever show up for the show up for the right day wearing the wrong thing? Oh, I forgot it was that day or whatever. I didn't bring my thing. If you don't have the right trumpet call and there's no text message, there's no email, there's no TV, how else would you know? You have to understand, do you know how big of a deal this was in the Old and New Testament? It's everything. It is everything. If you don't understand the ring of a phone, you don't answer the phone, you, how, much, how much would your life would you miss out on with no communication right now? You can't even imagine, right? It would, it's like it would take more faith for you to believe without communication than it would in some of the things of God because it's just like impossible, right? We can't be without communication. That's the first thing that's established in war is communication. Now, these trumpets and these shofars are for the holy people of God. You know what I love about this? You know what's so holy about this? I'm out on the sidewalk today, shining up the horn, and this lady walks by, and she's like, what is that? I'm like, it's a shofar. It's before, you know, before we had electricity and trumpets and technology. She says, oh, okay. Walks in the coffee shop. She comes out. I said, well, not really before we had trumpets. We had silver trumpets, but it was our first audio communication. She goes, Oh, and she's like, are you Jewish? I'm like, how would you know I'm Jewish? I'm a person of God by this shofar because this is holy to God. I said, do you believe in the Lord? And we got the gospel started getting preached because of this horn, because of an a animal horn, a ram's horn. Mercy. By that cry, he needs help, right? I know the sound, Okay. So do you. If you call me and I go, hey, how you doing? Awesome. You call me and I go, uh, you're going to go, what's wrong? How do you know? What do you mean nothing's wrong? I just felt like whimpering and crying. I just eating a sandwich here. <laughs> Doesn't work like that, does it? You don't cry. If you cry, you're either happy or you're sad. The trumpet is either for happy, rejoice, Celebrate! It's a festival of trumpets. It's a festival of Passover. It's a festival of Pentecost. Or get your stuff. We're going to war. One trumpet, two different sounds. Let me close with this. Let's read Numbers 29, verse 6. Your voice can do two things. You can praise God and bless man or curse God and curse man. That choice is how do you want your trumpet to sound? You can warn people and you can bless people. That's all good. Think about your free will. How powerful is your voice? Let's finish. Numbers 
Okay, that's one through six. Yay. By the way, right now is the seventh month, okay? In the civil calendar, it's the first month. Right now is the seventh month. What is it? Tishri. September. You are in the, when all the fall feasts happen, you're there right now, okay? We are in it. Go ahead. Ephah. Amen. It's a celebration, beloved. This is like next time you have a barbecue, blow the trumpet. Amen. The voice of God is linked to the trumpet sound. People come celebrate God, trumpet. People come go to war and defend the land of God, trumpet. People come, the Lord's giving a gift to man, it's the law, trumpet. People come, the angels are gathering the elect from the four winds. We'll get into that next week. The sound of the trumpet right here at Liberty Church. Amen. Okay.